said if I put my mic on, it might help. How's that? Is that better? It's amazing what happens when you use things properly. Hi, friends. Welcome to worship. Welcome to worship. Congratulations to you. Um, it, if you're new to us, we're so happy to have uh, um, Carrick and his family worshiping with us. Welcome, you guys. Um, welcome, everybody. If you've been here a hundred times or just one, we're so glad to gather together as the faith community to lift up some praises and to lay down some burdens. Amen? Okay, I'm going to roll right into announcements because we got amazing things happening in this faith community. Right, Pastor Kim? Uh, I have joys to share. I mean, joy, joy, joy. Uh, first joy is it the Swink family was named yesterday at the Northwest Missouri State football game Family of the Year, Bearcat Family of the Year. So let's give it up for the Swinks. And Brian's mom and dad, Mr. and Mrs. Swink, are also here to enjoy in the celebration and the joy. So welcome, welcome. Also, another joy, you'll remember we are collecting not, uh, per not perishable, non-perishable um, food items for the ministry center, which is really low. We already scooped up and loaded into Pastor Kim's uh, little yellow Volkswagen, and she has delivered 95 pounds of food just in the first week. So well done, and keep it up. We're going to be doing that for weeks to come because Thanksgiving and Christmas are coming, and the ministry center needs more on their shelves. Okay, another joy, you'll remember that we are doing this Advent study, I Am Mary, which is all about uh, Mary's experience um, being um, pregnant with, with Jesus and everything that happened to her and, and spiritually how she responded to. There are, if you would like one of these, the, it's a devotion book that's 40 pages long. We are encouraging the whole church to be a part of I Am Mary, seeing it through Mary's eyes. Next year, we're going to see it through Joseph's eyes. Um, but if you'd like one of these, they're $4, and next Sunday is the last day to call the church office and let them know if you're not in a small group and you haven't already put an order in. There are green sheets on the back table um, that kind of share a little bit from this devotion, so you could do this with a small group or you could do it on your own. I am Mary. Next week is the last uh, week to let us know if you'd like to do that. And we already have 46 people signed up to do it, so there's another joy. All right, um, there is a blood drive coming up at First Baptist Church on Monday the 26th and Tuesday the 27th, extended hours both days. They are very low um, on blood and they are needing people to step up and make time if you are able and uh, medically you're cleared to do that. Um, you can sign up at savealife.org. That's Monday and Tuesday the 26th and 27th. All right, lots of ways to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And here's two more coming up. Christine is going to share with us about the Kairos Prison Ministry. And then Jenny is going to share with us about the Wesley Methodist Student Ministry. Oh, I'm sorry, one last thing. One more joy. If you ordered a God Loves All, Love First at First in Maine, those shirts are in. And you can see me on the front pew afterwards to pick yours up if you ordered and paid for one. Go ahead. Last week, um, Wendy told you something about Kairos Outside, and I'm just going to kind of reiterate that a little bit and add a little bit here and there. Um, I want to thank you so much for uh, the support that you've given us in past years um, because it's been tremendous. Um, again, the Kairos Outside is a ministry for women who support people who are, in, in, uh, who are incarcerated. Um, some people had asked me before, are these people who have actually been incarcerated? There are a few that have, but most of them are people who have um, relatives or friends who are, in, uh, and there is a sense of shame that goes on with that. Or, um, and so what we try to do is to just help them feel loved more than anything. Uh, we do talk about choices and you know, ways that you can have some control of your life, and one of those choices that you can make um, is to have, have a relationship with Christ. But most we just want them to feel loved and not judged. Some of the ways that you can help with that is if you can help monetarily, um, uh, checks, you can give cash, but checks, um, if you want to do that, should be made out to the church. And then in the memo, just put Kairos. If you don't spell it right, that's okay. We'll figure it out. Um, one of the other really important ways to do it is pray, pray, pray. Now, we already have some people who have registered to come, um, but they're having some family issues that have come up, and so they might not be able to come, and we're trying to help them figure that out. 
So there's all kinds of distractions that can come up, either for the guests or for the workers. So please pray for them daily. Um, and as you do, there is a place on the table out uh, in the gathering space to sign up for the prayer. There are some bright green sheets where you can put your name, first name only, please, um, if you want to do that. Or if you want to pledge to pray for them you know, every day between now and um, October 9th, which is the Sunday when they come home, obviously you're welcome and encouraged to pray for them after that. But um, if you uh, want to pledge to do that every day, that's actually 22 times. Um, there's also a pad of paper there where you can just put your name and the number of times you pledge to pray, and I will fill out uh, the little paper for you. And the reason that little paper is important is because we cut those into strips, and if you remember the, per the chains that you made when you were in kindergarten, well, we make big paper prayer chain, a literal chain, and it goes into the community room so that people can physically see the prayers that are going up for them. So um, prayer is an incredibly important, it's probably the most important contribution that you can give. Um, and then uh, there's a, a place to sign up for food, obviously, and um, then there's another, uh, there's some sheets there where you can just color it. Just color it and, and sign your name. If you're a kid and you want to color it, uh, you know, again, first name only, um, but they, for kids, they like to know their age as well. So um, we encourage you to participate in some uh, way, shape, or form, um, and we thank you very much for all you're going to do. Good morning. I'm Jenny Wall, and I'm coming to you from the Wesley Student Center with our monthly update. And the focus of this month's update is on what goes on at Wesley throughout the week. Wednesday night, we have midweek worship. And we are currently without a director, and so we have various people signing up to offer midweek worship throughout the semester. And we are thankful that Travis and Elizabeth Demet have signed up to offer worship there on two weekend or two weeks a month to provide consistency throughout the semester. And I really appreciate them stepping in to do that. And Pastor Kim and Josh and Caitlin are also ensuring that there is consistency while various people come in and provide worship. So thank you to those of you who will be providing worship throughout the semester and to those that are kind of allowing some consistency to happen with that. On Thursday nights, we have Alpha, which was new to me, but essentially it means eat dinner while you talk about faith. And so thank you to those of you who provide dinner and to the students who come and eat dinner. Um, we're, we're very thankful for that community that happens on Thursday night. And Monday night is board game night. Um, this past Monday, the Wesley board had a meeting at the same time the board game night was going on. So we were in a different part of the building, but we could hear the excitement that was happening down with the board games. You know what it's like when your family gets together and plays board games and it gets kind of com um, competitive and so it was fun to hear all that going on down in the, um, in the room where they were playing board games. So thank you for your support of Wesley. If you want to provide food on Thursday nights or if you want to be a part of worship, please let us know. We'd be happy to have you. Also, I'm going to interject. Please donate blood. Um, as I'm not able to for 12 months after having melanoma, I'm recruiting four people each time there's a blood drive who are new donors to donate for me since I can't donate. So please come see me if you will be one of those four people. Don't turn it off. Flowers. After church today, if you want to have pizza at 1230 at Wesley, have pizza and then stay to plant some perennials. The Teals are delivering perennials out there right now and getting them all set where they need to go. And then you just need to dig a hole and stick them in the ground pretty
I can see families of children who have shared this song. The Harnicles, the Swings, look around here, Pomeraps, uh, also the Vincents. This song, as I said, has been shared through many, many families. We even have graduates like the Walkers and the Johnson family. So I hope you enjoy the songs this morning. But before we sing, we are going to share our thoughts about love. The children have written what love means to them. So I'm going to start with Zoe. Love is caring and helping others. All right. Well, family, would you like to come forward? I did an acrostic poem. Um, it has life giving for L, overpowers hate for O, very patient for V, enriches your life for E. Wonderful. Thank you, Karina. Karina? Love means forgiving others when they make us mad, and love is also inclusive. Very good. Luca? Obedient and give to God. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay. Love means you like something or someone very much. That's right. This is Hadley. Hello. <laughs> it's all right, sweetheart. Love is kindness, forgiving, respectful, honest, giving, being, believing in others, being a good friend. Excellent. This is from Ellie Klein, and she said we all can get along together especially a dog and a cat. <laughs> Need your help to get in here, Luca. Can you hold that for me? I'll trade you. And this is from Hud. You want to hold it up so they all can see it? This is from Hudson Klein. He said, even pirates make peace. Put on love.
love how you taught us that spiritual truth. Put on love every day. Thank you, Carol. I love the smiles and joys our kids bring to us. I think that one's going to stick in my head, Julie. Put on love every day. It's a good one to write down and put on your mirror. I invite our acolytes to come forward with the light of Christ, to light our candles for us. And I invite you to stand in body or in spirit as we sing My Lighthouse.
bouncing going on out there. We get some actions going. Even baby Izzy, I saw her. She's clapping right there against you. <laughs> Feels good to worship together.
surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm no Good morning, church. I don't know about you all, but I feel like we've been to worship already. Amen. God is doing something amazing in our time together, and we just give him the glory. We give him the thanks. This is our time where we uh, lift up our noisy bucket offering, so I'm going to call on some, some of our youth. Doesn't matter how young or how old you are, if you feel youthful today, you can be useful to come pick up a bucket, and let's make some noise. I like it when I say that and everybody just comes running down to the altar. Come on, friends, let's make some noise. Noisy Offering Day is a day that we choose once a month where we raise up some noise, dropping the coins in, because we all know that we've got coins just laying around, right? We have people that just wait each and every month for this so they can bring their coin jar. They've cleaned out their sofas. They've gotten underneath the car seats and tossed away the french fries to find the pennies and the nickels and the dimes and the quarters. And today, friends, we're raising money for 
uh, Toys for Tots. How many of you are familiar with Toys for Tots? We, uh, we are raising money. It's about that time. We're getting into uh, October real soon. And when I say that out loud, I'm like going, oh my goodness, October means that Christmas is coming. In the church world, when you work in leadership at a church, you say October, everybody goes, what are we doing for Advent? It's right around the corner, right? We're raising money for this beautiful ministry that is uh, headed up by TCW, Today's Civic Women. I happen to be a member of it. Kara Pouchet, who is a member of our church, and Kathy, um, Kathy, uh, Kathy, thank you, right now, I wanted to say dredge, and I don't know why, probably because there's a dredge in the building today. Uh, but we, we are members of this organization, and uh, Today's Civic Women, uh, uh, many years ago, chose to do Toys for Tots so that children in Nottaway County receive Christmas gifts underneath their Christmas tree every single year. And so we work with community services um, to come up with families uh, that have children that are in need and they can be uh, from infant all the way up to high school age and so it is a great experience uh, on the day that we are able to have the families come through and collect all uh, the toys that have been wrapped for their children and so what a blessing and so I just want to say thank you church that every time we bring out the buckets you uh, you uh, come and you offer and uh, you give back and so I want to say thank you as we lift up a prayer for the gifts that have been received today will you bow with me please Gracious Lord, we uh, just come to say thank you. We come to say thank you this morning with our voices lifted high in the praise, knowing that you are here to hear what we're saying to honor you. And so we want our voices to be loud for you, Lord, today. And we want to say thank you to you for gifting us in so many ways so that we're able to give back in, in the ways that we do in our community whether it be through service or through writing checks or giving of funds lord you have gifted us in so many ways and we're just grateful to be able to give back to um, toys for tots that um, children will receive a, a blessed and happy christmas morning May these gifts be used wisely and well for our community to know you and to make you known in the places we go. We praise you in his blessed name. Amen. If you are new to us following our pastoral prayer, we always have a quiet time of reflection. And it's a time for us to just make some space to receive God and whatever God has for us. So you're welcome to stay where you are, but you're also welcome to come forward and kneel and pray or light a candle at one of our candle altars. Um, we also have a prayer shawl ministry, and if you're going through something that's difficult or someone you know and you'd like to take one of those, um, you're welcome to. Pastor Kim and I would be glad to meet you after service to pray, especially for that person, um, although all of those who knit and put those together are praying um, as they are knitting that together, but we want people to know that the love and prayers of God's family are sur surrounding them. Um, our wooden offering boxes are here and here, and you can also put a prayer request in that. So feel free to move as the Spirit um, leads you. For a long time, um, we have known that our bodies can lead the way to where our spirits are. And so yoga was made to get ready for a time of meditation so that our minds and spirits could be still as our bodies move. So I, because that's all interwoven, it's not separate. Um, so I invite you to open yourself to the spirit by just drawing your shoulders back a little bit and opening your heart center. And if you wish, tipping your face to heaven or bowing your, your head, whatever works for you. Take in a long sip of air and then follow it with one more. And then a long exhale. It's a physical way we can signal our openness to God. Will you pray with me? Good morning, Lord. We rejoice to be your people and to be gathered here in your name as a community of faith, lifting up worship because we find that our cares fall to the side when our eyes are on you and we are singing your praises. We pray that our worship honors you and that our lives do as well. 
So awaken us to your love because it is the firm foundation on which we can build our lives. We take a moment in quiet before you to just be and to breathe for that in itself can be worship. We take a moment in quiet to lift up whatever cares are on our hearts, whether those be personal or global. And Lord, we always want to remember to give you thanks. Sometimes in the joys, we're rushing and jumping and excited and um, we forget to say thank you. So we take just a moment to let bubble to the surface a good gift you have placed before us and, and give thanks for it. Thank you, O oh God, for the power of community and the power of silence. We wait in expectation, God, that you, like a mother bird, will feed us the squawking fledglings. Thank you for finding us precious despite our squawking. Thank you for moving to cover us with your feathers, to comfort us, and to meet the needs in our lives. Jesus, you invite us to come and see who you are and how you love. Some say you are the savior of the half-open door, for you are always inviting but your invitations require us to step forward and press our hand against the door and enter to seek you, to question, to wonder. So we come this morning with open hearts to experience you, Jesus. We come to deepen our relationship with you. Challenge us to be inviters of people drawing them into your table, extending the same invitation, come and see. God, sometimes the world can feel big and scary, but we're remembering today that you are bigger and your love is powerful. With you by our side, we can and do make a difference in this world. We lift up some of those who we have spoke of today in worship. Lift up all the guests from Kairos, the women who are loving and supporting someone who is incarcerated. Lord, we lift up the Wesley Center ministry, all the students at Northwest on campus, and our student interns, all of the leaders for Wesley. Lord, we pray for our own congregation, and we pray for the United Methodist Church across this globe. It is our hope to be instruments of peace and justice. So let us feel your joy, the joy that makes our hearts burst open. We lift our love to you, and we thank you for the gifts you shower back on us. In Jesus' name we pray. And for him we live. Amen.
Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, you can. Uh, good morning. I'll be reading uh, John uh, chapter 1, verses 35 through 46. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher. Rabbi, where are you staying? He said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. Uh, he found Philip and said to him, follow me. And now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him who uh, we have found him about whom Jesus in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip said to him, The word of God for the people of God. <laughs> that was fun. I enjoyed that. You know, sometimes uh, we don't realize that we are um, in the in a in the presence of greatness. We are in the presence of the greatness of the Swinx today, but we're always in the presence of. I don't know. I, <laughs> you know, what was funny about that yesterday. I was working in one of the concession stands, and he texted me, and he said, the Swinks are on the field. They're the family. They're the ones. And then I thought, there can be only one. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> anyway, Heidi, I want to thank you for the reading of this word today because this is a, this is a, a really fun scripture for us today. Um, and, and the way that you read it was the way that I it, it kind of envisioned playing it out because it's almost like the, 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 the whispering and the, the confusion and the awkwardness sometimes of this scripture. You know, last week we talked about um, the greater things scripture coming out of John chapter 14, the greater things where Jesus says to his disciples, you will do greater works than I. You will do greater things. And we, we feel sometimes inadequate in that, right? When we have been told that we can live into the greatness of what Christ has to offer, how do we do greater things than Jesus? Sometimes it's as simple as looking at, looking at the way that Jesus chose his disciples. In this passage at the beginning of John's gospel, we see Jesus that are, he's calling his first disciples and he's doing three very simple things. First of all, he's making notice of the two disciples that are following behind him. He engages with them. And then he offers invitation to them. So let's take a look at this in John chapter 1, beginning in verse 35. 
It says the next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples. Now, we're talking about John the Baptist. We're not talking about John the Methodist. We're talking about John the Baptist. John the Baptist, who had been telling his followers for so many years that someone greater than him would be coming. And so it's, the scripture kind of lays this out for us. The next day, John again, that word again, signifies that John had been teaching and teaching and teaching. But it also could mean that the two disciples had been listening and hearing and hearing and hearing and having the anticipation of the greater one that was to come. And as he watched, John saw this Jesus walk by and he exclaimed, There he is. The Lamb of God, the Messiah has come. Now, for the hearing ears that heard this, specifically two of John the Baptist's disciples, they hear, and what do they do? They turn and they follow. Almost as if they were given permission by John the Baptist. Of course they'd been given permission. He had been grooming them to know that someone greater was to come. And when John saw them, saw the one, these two disciples, they heard this and they followed Jesus. And when Jesus turned and he saw them following, he says something that's kind of awkward. What are you looking for? As if to say, why are you following? Why do you desire to come along with me? And they said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? This seems like a very awkward way to start a conversation with someone, right? It's kind of cryptic in a way. What are you looking for? Well, where are you staying? Come and see. I think we can piece this together and we can know about this urgency of Jesus as he calls his disciples. Friends, he doesn't waste any time. They came and they saw where he was staying and they remained with him that day, it was about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I always wonder, right? Why do they put a time of day here? Why is there time of days mentioned in Scripture? I would like to say that in this moment, we could look at it a couple of ways. Jesus traveling all throughout the day, preaching and teaching, wherever Jesus was preaching and teaching, must have been getting tired, and it was at the end of the day, and he certainly would need to be fed and he would need to find a place of rest. We could look at this also to say that traveling on foot, you wouldn't want to get caught out in the wilderness, the desert terrain, after a certain time of the day. As I was reading about this time of the day being 4 p.m., I also found that it is at this very sacred window of time where holy conversations might still be taken in the Jewish faith. And so this time of day in Scripture tells us that it was a certain time of day where maybe these disciples were saying, let's just find out where he's staying. Let's don't follow too close right now. But maybe we can make an appointment with him in the morning to see what he's up to. This invitation to come and see. Jesus turned and he saw them following. What do you do when you find somebody following you? If you're like me, you walk a little faster. Sometimes you glance over your shoulder and you're like, going, okay, they're okay, I can turn. Most of the time, friends, we walk a little faster, right? This is not what Jesus did in this moment. Jesus stopped and he engaged. He asked and he invited. Jesus turned to them. They were following. They were wishing, yet not daring to question him. Maybe there was a sense of nervousness about them to follow not too close. And maybe not yet the right time to speak. After all, John the Baptist had just told them that this was the one that they were looking for, the Lamb of God, the Holy One, the Anointed One. But Jesus doesn't stop them in this moment. He almost says to them, come a little closer. 
Come and find out more right now because of that sense of urgency. Jesus said, come and see, to encourage these two disciples of John the Baptist to not hesitate, but to come now. The sense of urgency to follow, and they did. It's the sense of urgency that we find in the other Gospels of the calling of the disciples in Matthew 4 and Mark chapter 1. Jesus very simply says, come follow me. Come follow me, he said to Simon Peter and brother Andrew. And at once they left their nets and they followed him. Then he saw James and John, brothers, the sons of Zebedee, and he immediately, they immediately left their boat and their father and followed him. That sense of urgency that was right there. And Jesus engages in that relationship. He said to them, come and see. And they came and they saw. And what did they do in the seeing? Well, it's almost like this chain reaction of invitation. Jesus engaged them, brought them in, and invited them. And with that, Andrew went and got Simon Peter, his brother, and said, Come on along. The anointed one is here. But it didn't stop there. Jesus engaged in this conversation in such a way that he began to give names, right? Not just nicknames to those that he was just meeting, but life-filling names. You are Simon, son of John, and you shall be called Cephas, which is translated Peter, which is translated the rock. And if we read throughout the rest of the gospel, we find out that special place that Simon Peter found himself in simply listening to his brother who had met the Messiah. The next day, verse 43 says, the next day, and I love that these two sections of text, John chapter 1, verse 35, and John chapter 1, verse 43, start with the next day, the next day, the next day. Jesus was all about preparing for the next day for the next disciple that he would meet and the ones that would answer his call. The next day, Jesus wakes up and he decides to go to Galilee. We think that's a far-off trip, right? It's not like going to Ireland. Somebody has that on their shirt this morning. It's like a hop, skip, and a jump down the road to go to Galilee. And there he found Philip, and he said, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida the city of Andrew and Peter. So now we have, we have Philip, who apparently would have to know Andrew and Peter, right? And so suddenly Jesus has created this small group of people. He noticed them, he engaged with them, and he gave that invitation to them. And now that Philip had been invited into this relationship. Philip runs off and he finds Nathaniel. I'm sure Nathaniel at the time was leaning against a tree, waiting for the day the Messiah would come. And here comes Philip. What kind of excitement do you think that Philip had inside of him when he saw Jesus and knew, felt, because of of John the Baptist's teaching to come up to Nathanael and say, We have found him. We have found the one that Moses and all of the law of the prophets had been teaching us about. Finally, he has come. Jesus, the son of Joseph. From, you know, if, 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 uh, if Philip had stopped right there and not gone the next step to give a little bio of Jesus. Jesus, the son of Joseph from Nazareth. What might have... Nathaniel's first reaction been, besides the one we have recorded in Scripture, Nathaniel, for all of his life and into history, has been known as one of the naysayers in Scripture. Can anything good come from Nazareth? What does Philip say? Very simply, come and see. 
This invitation has a trickle down, starting with Jesus himself, who tapped the spirit, the heart of those who were being raised up by John the Baptist to know that someone greater was coming, to stop in their tracks, to turn and to follow this Jesus, to lean in close enough. Where are you staying? And Jesus says, man, let's just not talk about it. Come and see. Follow me. Let me show you the way. Let me show you the truth. Let me show you the life and the life eternal. This scripture is bookended by a come and see from the Messiah and a come and see from a disciple. Telling us that, friends, we need to live out hands and feet, heart and soul, the same pattern that Jesus himself lives out to notice, to engage, and to have an invitational heart. How do you feel when you get an invitation? You feel excited, right? I want to go there. I got an invitation in the mail just this week, and I put it in my folder because I felt so special. You see, my little niece is not so little anymore. She's grown up and married, been married for almost a year, and she's getting ready to have a baby. Now, they were married the weekend of Halloween last year, so it's apropos for them to have a baby shower the same weekend, right? And so my invitation when I opened it up, a baby is brewing. My special invitation to deepen a relationship and to spread the love that this baby is going to bring, right? That is what invitation is all about, the ability to get an invitation, to hear an invitation, and then to be excited about the invitation. You remember way back in the 80s when we had those little bumper stickers on the car? Follow me to FUMC. I don't know if we had those bumper stickers, but a lot of churches had them, right? Follow me. Where are we going to follow you? I don't know. Follow me. Here we go. We're go we ended up at church, right? Those bumper stickers were so good to call people to follow us. And why were people putting those bumper stickers on their car? An easy invitation to follow me to come and see what's happening at this place. The chain reaction of what Jesus taught his first disciples to notice, hey, somebody's following me. I got to do something about that. I can't run. I need to engage. And in the engagement of that following, the invitation comes. And what would it look like if we were as giddy as these first disciples and we said, come on, get a bull and get on board right here, friends. What is going on at the corner of First and Main that excites you? What's going on in your spiritual life that is exciting you? And how might we, friends, be able to be uh, people with a come and see attitude that invites people into a relationship right here, right where we are? The same way that Jesus did it. And it's not rocket science over here, right? It's not like Jesus was this great theologian who studied the books. Oh, by the way, he did. But that's not what Jesus was really about. Jesus was about cha changing and transforming the world in such a way that we would have an eagerness to invite others into a relationship, to take notice of those that are here and those who are not, to make, take notice of those who are invited in and those who are being pushed away to take notice in such a way that we open our arms and we gather all people in because we notice the richness of the relationship. What might it look like if we begin to engage one another and all of the others with an attitude of 
Jesus, a come and see, trickling down to come and see. Come and see, follow me. Come and see, follow me, to F-U-M-C. Man, it flows. That's our next t-shirt right there. Because God's love is here. We have something to shout about. We have something to share. And we need to get excited about the invitation to take notice, to engage in relationship, and then let the invitation flow. That everybody is welcomed here in this place. That everybody is welcome into a relationship with Jesus. Who's the next person you will look at and say, man, come and see what's happening here. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come and see when we have a relationship with the living God through Christ, we believe. Would you stand in body or spirit for our closing song, This I Believe, the Creed.
t-shirt. Courtney will be in the gathering space if you'd like to contribute to Kairos Prison Ministry. And may you be blessed this week. May the Holy Spirit offer us an invitation to, to bring before us someone who's spiritually seeking that we can say, come and see. Let me tell you a little bit about Jesus in my life. May it be so. Go in joy and in peace. Amen.